hey there, still pregnant. I disappeared <laughs> for a minute. You probably thought what you were thinking was, was what happened. That's not what happened. So took my first trip to the ER. That was interesting. Long story short, everything's fine. Baby was always fine. I am now fine. I'm fine. This pregnancy has been a doozy. That's the long and short of that. But I thought it was very serendipitous that this was happening at the same time that I had written a video for you called How to Stop Wasting Time. Because when you have these huge circumstances happening that you absolutely have to deal with, you can't ignore them. They're literally affecting your ability to function. It's easy to get frustrated, like you're wasting time. So now I'm feeling very prepared with a great deal more perspective on the things I wanted to share with you today. And I've added a few more thoughts after this really annoying but important life experience. And again, I just need to stress, everything is fine, I'm fine, the baby was always fine. It was just something that tripped me up hardcore for a hot moment. In order to stop wasting time and to really understand what the most productive people are doing, we gotta stop some things and we gotta start some things. The first thing we need to stop, stop looking for quick tips and hacks. It's so easy to think that you're preparing. It's so easy to think that this is the important work that you're doing right now. Even watching this video, it might seem a little sexy to you to get a quick summary of how to stop wasting time, but all this preparation that you're putting into how do I just have the right mindset of not wasting time is potentially contributing to a little bit of wasted time. Who can blame you though? You don't even realize that you're procrastinating because all you're doing is looking for the slightest clue as to what you should be focused on. And sometimes that permission slip is what you're reaching for and what you're needing to feel a little bit better about what you do with your time so that you know it's not wasted. But you can't know that. It's unknowable. You will only know it once you've actually taken an action. So the more time that you add to the side of getting motivated around doing something, the more time you're taking away from actually moving the needle on what's important. Next, we need to start studying, researching, and reading earlier and easier. When we hunker down to get the thing that we want, it's easy to say, I'm going to research how to make better use of my time, rather than researching the actual information that's gonna make you smarter at mastering the thing you want to do in your life. That feels like a bigger task, that feels harder, and so we often won't do it, especially if the research or the gleaning of information has friction attached to it. This is why audiobooks are very popular versus sitting down and reading a book for someone who's just not someone who likes to sit down to read. They're more likely to want to listen to something to make it happen a bit more fluidly and faster. But what if that information is not in an audiobook? Maybe it's in a research paper. Maybe it's in a blog post article that you added to your read later that you have never gotten around to because you actually have to sit down to read it later. <laughs> this is why I was very excited to partner with the sponsor of this segment of the video, which is listening.com. Listening is an app that turns academic papers, textbooks, PDFs, websites, and emails into audio so you can listen to them on the go. So when you have that moment that you're like, oh, I need to read that, if only it could just get read to me, there is an app for that and listening is it. Listening actually has an array of AI voices that make it so much more human and easier to understand when text is being turned into audio form. So you can actually pick the person that you enjoy listening to the most so that voice will read the text to you in a way that's more conducive to your learning style. It's so easy to put off going deep on a document like a contract or a white paper or some kind of a research problem that you need to read for school because you need to get in the right headspace for it. But if you had an app like Listening that it not only allows you to read it in an audible way, but maybe you just need to kind of get introduced to it before you go super deep. I know there's plenty of contracts that I need to read from top to bottom are exactly the way I need them to be but I could probably catch a few things early on before we get to that final, final stage. And listening allows me to kind of go through the high points, listen for anything that, you know, perks my ears up that we can make adjustments on earlier on so that I have a more final version when we make some changes. Listening.com is giving you an opportunity to say, I wanna read this paper, I wanna understand this problem, I want to read this blog post that seems that would be interesting, and I'm not gonna make any excuses on picking up the most important points to me right now in this moment. Because all you have to do is ship the paper off 
to the app so that it will read it to you in the style that you like. Listening.com shows its greatest strengths when it's reading things like math problems, science terminology, and complex terms. And you can even automatically skip citations and footnotes if you want. If we wanted a hack from this video of how to stop wasting time, this is it. Check out the link in the description down below and stop hesitating to learn something new just because you might not be able to pick it all up yourself. Leverage the amazing technology of listening.com with my link in the description below. The next thing we need to do is stop assuming everything is about you. The biggest time waster that I see most people get caught up in is the obligation that we feel we need to have to other people. Maybe you get invited to a lot of different types of events. Maybe you feel you're asked to do favors for people all the time because people really know that you will show up. Congratulations for having that reputation. But after a while, you start to feel a little bit jaded that these things that you're doing, the time that you're spending, the people you're helping may or may not be totally appreciating the work that you're putting in. And that ultimately not only makes you feel like you're wasting time, but gets you really frustrated about where you are in your life. I just want you to reposition the whole thing. It's easy to think that you're the center of this equation because you're the one being asked. But in all reality, it's that the other people are just asking for the help. And it's about what they need when they need it to achieve what they want. And your ability to say no to that is not only having a boundary for yourself, but it's in acknowledging that it's okay for someone to ask for help and it's okay for someone to not always say yes to it. They may really want you at that party. You specifically, you're the life of it, you're a great time, you're someone people want around, and that's a great feeling, but that's not going to not be true just because you decide to allocate that time to something else. You might be the best in your craft at helping somebody at this one thing that they keep coming back to you for. You need to be able to allocate your time for things that are important to you. And it's okay for you to express that to people, for you to explain it, or for you to decide not to explain it at all and simply allow the word no to be a complete sentence. Next, I want you to start assuming you're going to run out of time. In my recent debacle, the biggest thing that I was so grateful for was that there were multiple deadlines that I needed to achieve by a certain date. And I was, let's say, a week and a half or so ahead of schedule on everything. And I stuck with it. I, first of all, this is an impending deadline. So that was the only deadline I was really worried about. But then a whole bunch of other stuff derailed my plans. And where I could have thought I had three or four more weeks if things went awry, I ended up not having that time at all. It was taken. A solid two weeks of my recent past was just taken from me and it frustrates me so much. But because I assumed I would run out of time and stayed ahead of schedule on some other deadlines, I didn't have to be in the hospital, be on bed rest, be sick and be thinking, ah, I didn't get that stuff done. I thought I had more time. This is one of the biggest things when it comes to wasting time. We just make mass assumptions about it. How much we have, how little we have, and I'm gonna unpack this even more in the next tip. We have to assume we're going to run out of time. Parkinson's law is something that you've heard me talk about a lot on this channel. It's an axiom that states, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So in other words, the amount of time that you think you have will get filled to the brim and potentially run out for the work that you need to complete within it. And that is because we make it harder throughout the time that we use that makes it continue to expand rather than get done in a shorter period of time. The harder we make it, the more daunting it feels, the more time it takes up. By assuming we're going to run out of time, you chip away at things a lot more and you stick with it and you stay ahead of schedule as long as you don't let it get too daunting or hard in your head. The moment that you get a project, what can you do right now to start it? The moment you receive a research paper you've got to write, what can we do to make it less daunting because the start hasn't happened yet? Start assuming you're going to run out of time and you're much more likely to stay ahead of schedule. And off the back of that, we have to stop thinking there isn't enough time. It sounds like the opposite of what I just said, but it's not. You've probably also often heard me say on this channel that time is our most precious resource. That may not be completely true. You know how we're always saying there's not enough time in the world and then that annoying person that's trying to make you feel a little bit better is like, well, we all have the same number of hours in the day. Beyonce has the same number of hours in the day as you do. The reason why that's important is because the more we blame the lack of time, the more we're just 
taking the responsibility off of ourselves. And in all actuality, the precious resource that we have to look at, that we need to pay attention to, is our attention. You have the same amount of time as everyone else. Yes. Where is your attention going during that time? That is what makes the difference. And the most productive people in the world are so completely and utterly obsessed with what they're paying attention to, that that is what makes the difference in how they spend the hours of their day. That is what makes them pay for certain solutions to get solved for them so that they can continue to allocate attention during these certain hours on these certain things. This is how they know how to say no, because they have this very short list of what they're going to pay attention to. And when you ask them to go to a party or there's a new season of something on Netflix you could binge for 10 hours, it's an easy no because the resource of where they spend their attention is the actual precious commodity. At the same time that we need to start assuming we're going to run out of time, because we all will, we need to stop assuming there's not enough time because that's what is making us procrastinate from the start to begin with. And what's actually true is how you spend the time, what you're paying attention to, and how much you can juice out of every minute. So with all that being said, now I want you to just start thinking about how you want to focus during your time well spent. What do you want to be doing? Where do you want your attention to be? And do it. Maybe you only get 30 free minutes a day. If that's true, then we probably have some other issues we need to work out and some time needs to get freed up in some way. But even if that's the case, what do you do for your 30 spare minutes? What do you wish you were doing? Where do you wish you were spending your time? How do you wish your life was different? And then why are you not even giving that little amount of time to the potential of where you could be? I'm just going to assume you kind of know what you want to be doing, where you'd rather be, what you'd rather be focused on. And instead of just wishing it was the case, tell the truth about the outside voices and the inside voices that are preventing that from happening. What will people say? What does everybody think about this? What does everybody else think I should be doing? I don't know if I can do it. Nobody else thinks I can do it, so maybe I can't. All of those voices are the real reason why you won't even give the few minutes a day that are at your disposal to something that means something to you. So we give it up to the scroll. So we give it up to the Netflix. So we give it up to something that doesn't matter because we'll try again tomorrow unless you assume you will run out of time. And the last thing I will say, which was my biggest lesson from the last couple of weeks, is that you gotta stop beating yourself up for the things that are absolutely not time wasters and are a moment of needing to rehabilitate and slow down. There were so many times in the last couple of weeks that I was thinking, I just, I just really wanna go shoot a video right now. It would make me feel so much better if I could just go sit down and do the thing that I wish was already done, this video. But I knew I wasn't up for it. My body wasn't up for it. My mind wasn't here yet. Am I gonna be mentally better here for you or for me if I make myself feel bad enough about not getting something done? No, I genuinely needed a break. Even though I have a baby coming and that's a whole nother break that's probably gonna have to happen. I can't get in my head about that because I can only listen to my body and realize that this was the grace that it needed. You know when you're wasting time. You know. You know when it's for the wrong reasons. You know when you need to take the break. You're smart enough. You've been through life. You're watching this video. You've had experiences. You've got the wisdom. And you've heard plenty of people tell you all these same things. So if you decided to watch this video because you're worried you're wasting time, you probably heard a few things today that reminded you where you could get better. But more than anything, I hope you heard where you're doing just fine. That you can be at peace with and know that you are doing the best that you can. And I know you're doing the best that you can because you watch this channel. And everyone who watches this channel genuinely, in the shoes that they are in, in the state of their lives, right now, in this chapter, in this season, you are doing the best you can with what you know and what you have right now. So take solace in that and then find the opportunities where you can tweak and just feel like you're getting a little bit better every day. Because it is not about these grand changes in your life. It is about the little things that add up over time. And as frustrating as that is to hear and to have to trust in the process, it's actually kind of great. 
If you enjoyed this video and you want more simple and baby step advice to being more productive, I highly recommend that you check out the link to my newsletter in the description down below, oneminuteproductivity.com. If you want to become one of the most productive people in the world, it's very simple. Be honest about how much time you have and what you're doing with it.